welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last episode, making an EVA foam vector part one, we got a bunch of this thing done, and I mean a bunch. Um, we still got a lot of work left to do. Uh, so in this episode, making an EVA foam vector part two, we're going to finish the build, which is just as easy as the first part of the build was. Um, and then we're going to seal it and we're going to paint it. A uh, real simple paint job, real simple technique, just to make it look a little bit kind of like dirty and used. Um, we're going to seal it, we're going to brush on our silver so it leaves these nice dark areas around all the little pieces and the gray is going to be a little bit broken up, it's not going to be solid. Um, so it has that kind of like worn look. And uh, then we're going to come in and do the black, which is super easy brushwork. And then we're going to put some tones in there to make it look a little bit oxidized and some little scratching details. So uh, should be fun and should be super easy. So uh, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, we're going to start assembling our handle. Okay, so we've got a 36, 36, and then we're going to stack up this 24 and these two four millimeter pieces. As you can tell, we had a leftover piece of foam from when we built our sucker punch axe right there. So we're gonna use this inside line we drew. All right, so we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and cut these shapes out real quick. All right, there we go, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna take this 36 millimeter piece and we're going to do a second cut on it. All right. All right, there we go. Now we're going to go cut that on the bandsaw. All right, there we go. We did our side cut and then we did our tapered cut. Right. Okay, we changed our mind. We got a clean piece of foam. We drew our side cut on here. We don't need the square piece after all. We're just going to cut the shape out just like that. So we're going to go over to the scroll saw and the bandsaw for that. All right, there we go, band saw and scroll saw. Okay, now we're gonna come in and cut out our two four millimeter pieces. All right, there we go. We've got our four millimeter pieces on both sides. We transferred our pattern over that we're gonna to cut to. So we're gonna go over to the band saw again and knock that out. Nice, look at that. Now it looks like this is wrapped around the handle. That's really cool. Now it's kind of impossible when you've got a piece on both sides to have it line up. So we're a tiny bit off there. And then we come in here and we stick this through. There we go. Nice. Perfect. Now it lines up right there. And we're going to do the same thing here. Perfect. All right, now we're going to come in with our Dremel and we're going to soften the edge around here, all right? Really cool detail. Okay, we made a slight mistake. We used 36 millimeter for this piece, but we were supposed to have it match up with this, which is 24 millimeter. So as you can tell, when you come in and you place this in here, this is skinnier than this. So we're gonna trim this down so it fits. We're gonna send it through the bandsaw so that we're perfect. So now that can attach just like that, but before we... Okay, we got this side lined up flush, and we got that side lined up flush. All right, nice. That's really nice. Now we're going to 
squeeze this in. We're shaping up. Now what we did is, because this is an inch thick, which is 24 millimeter, we took an inch circle and we drew these shapes at the bottom, okay, because we want to slightly round over the top and the bottom, okay? So, okay, don't forget your dust mask. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty nice. Okay, now we're going to get in here and we're going to clean it up with our smooth bit. All right, there we go. We shaped these to be a little bit more round. All right, now we're going to do the butt end of the handle. That's going to be a 36 millimeter piece of foam. So we're going to go over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut this out. All right, there we go. It's a little bit of a rough cut on there because that's a tight little circle. We probably should have done it on the scroll saw, but we'll be all right because we'll be able to clean it up. All right. All right, there we go. Now we're going to Dremel from that line up to that line right there. All right, look at that beautiful square bevel right there. And then this is going to come in and attach right on there. That's why we rounded these off. That is pretty sweet. All right, now we're going to do one more cut on here. We're going to do our side cut. All right. Get a curved bottom, just like that. Pretty sweet. All right, let's slightly round that edge off. All right, there we go. That's sweet. All right, let's uh, let's seal it up. That's a pretty cool handle right there. Wow, and again, like we said earlier, we didn't mess up with this 36 millimeter piece. We could have cut this whole piece out of one piece of 24 millimeter, but we saved it and it looks pretty darn good. Once we seal it, no one will really see that. Wow, that is nice. All right, All right now we're gonna put this brass support inside of our handle so it's not too flexible. Um, that's probably going to be okay right there. So we made our marks, okay, with our Sharpie. This is how far the piece is going to go up into the handle. And then this line right here represents it passing through this piece. And then this is how far it's going to go up into the body of our vector, all right? So we've got that ready. We've got our drill bit ready with our marking on it for how far it needs to go in. But first, we want to start a little bit of a pilot hole, okay? So we've got our center marks on here. Now, I hope we don't wreck this handle because a lot of work went into it. But here we go. We're going to go right up to that black line right there, all right? Perfect. Look at that. Now that handle's really sturdy. You can feel it in there. Look at that, man, that is jamming. All right, now we're gonna drill all the way through this piece, but because we want it to go straight through, we're gonna go over and use the drill press. All right, there we go, right through the middle. Now let's take this and let's slide it on there. Now we made contact, those two pieces. We'll clean this up with the Dremel. All right, there we go. It's stuck together. We used our Dremel to clean off the glue residue. That's okay, now we figured out where this pole would fall. Okay, we measured our space. We measured how high up and how far in from the side. And we've got our little mark right there. So that's where we need to drill in. All right, and again, that's how far we have to drill into the body right there. So we made our black mark. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to 
lay this down on the table and we're going to try to come in and do it. A little bit nervous after all this work. That's pretty darn good. Wow, I'm happy with that. Let's make a mark. Right there and right there. Right up against the back. Wow, loving that, man. Check that rascal out. That's a handle right there. Really cool. Okay, now we're going to do these little details that are going to go back on the handle. We're going to use our brass tubes for these. We're going to come into this four millimeter piece and we're going to pop out four of these. Now we're going to come in with this smaller brass tube with a three millimeter piece of foam and we're going to pop out four of those. Put a little super glue puddle down. Okay, now we're going to start doing our scope that's going to sit on the top real easy. Three, four, and twelve millimeter. Pivot right around our piece. Okay, now our 12 millimeter piece, we're going to use this brass tube. It's a tiny bit smaller than we want, but we can live with it. Right. There we go. Okay, now we're sawing up and down. All right, we're not going all the way through, we're just getting a pilot cut started. Actually, this is a little bit of a scroll saw action here, but we're not. Come back over to this side, and we're going to do our up and down sawing again, but this time we're going to go all the way through it. All right, that's actually not bad. Not bad at all. All right. That is actually not terrible. All right, loving it, man, loving it. All right, we're gonna get a little bit of super glue right here on the bottom. Get it on our X-Acto blade, and we're gonna stand it right here, up against our scope. Got these cool little raised side things right there and right there. That looks Just like that. Nice, look at that, man. We got our scope, we got these little brackets, and we got the little nuts there on the side. All right, now we're gonna do the next little set of pieces that's gonna go right on here, similar to what we did here. All right, and here it is. We've got our two millimeter, three millimeter, four, and 12. All right, real easy stuff. So we're gonna cut all these out with our X-Acto knife. Just about like that. Ooh, that's nice. All right, we got our front one. Now we got our back one. All right, now we'll take these couple of little six millimeter pieces. All 
Okay, now these are going to be all the little circular details, little rivets and stuff on the side, both sides of our vector. Real simple stuff. We've got some two millimeter and a bunch of four. All right, so we're either going to use a brass tube if we have the right one, or the X-Acto knife if we don't. We're going to cut all these out and begin to assemble them. Really? There we go. Just a perfect size for these holes here. All right, that's it. Now we're going to cut all these out. All right, there we go. We've got our outer circle cut out and our little inner circle that we split in half, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our time first and we're going to round the edge of the bases and then we're going to stick these other pieces in the middle of them with super glue. All right, there we go. Stick them right there. All right, there we go. Really nice. Now we're just going to heat seal all those. Okay, here's the next batch I'll cut out. Now we're going to do dremeling around all the edges, just so the edges are kind of rounded over on all these. And then here's our two square four millimeter pieces. What we're going to do here is we're just going to tip our knife and we are going to go right through our piece tipped on an angle. All right, there we go. Just by doing four bevel cuts, we've got this cool little beveled square thing. All right, there we go. We've got them all laying here in place. We're just going to pick them up, get them wet, stick them back down. All right, now we've got our little triangle details here. Two, three, and four millimeter foam. We're going to pivot right around these tight corners. There we go, just like that. Pretty nice. Now we're going to round this edge off. Let's heat seal all these little pieces we just put on here because they're all still raw foam. Okay, now we're going to do one more little piece on here. It's going to be a hinge. So we've got a 12 millimeter dowel and a couple little extra little rivets that we popped out with a brass tube. Right. Oh. All right, there we go. Now we're going to round the edges with our Dremel. All right, now we've just got a slight little round edge now on all the pieces so that when we stick it together it's gonna look like separate pieces piece of super glue down there Okay, there we go. Now we cut it, rounded the edges, and reattached it so it looks like separate pieces.
All right, look at that hinge right there. That is sweet. It looks like you could totally swing this arm open now. That is crazy awesome. And we did something too off camera. We didn't film it. We came in with this big flat Dremel bit and we came in here and we opened up our barrel right there. We came in and we pushed it in and rotated it around a little bit just to give us that little recess in the front of the barrel there so it wasn't a flat front. All right, that's it, man. Check that thing out. That is swell. What a cool prop. Nice. All right. So with that last little detail, doing this little dowel, cutting it apart, rounding the edges, sticking it back together for the hinge, that brings the build portion of our PUBG Vector to a close. Okay, here we are at the spray stand. We're going to begin coating our vector with our Plasti Dip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. Alright, man, we say it every time, but this is one of those stages where it jumps from being fake to being legit. When you finish the build, it's totally awesome, but man, when you seal it in Plasti Dip, that thing jumps up to looking totally real. Look at that thing. Alright, now we're going to hang it up, we're going to let it dry all the way through. It's already pretty dry on the outside, but we're going to let it dry all the way through all the coats, and then we're going to come in and paint it. Super easy paint job, too. All right, here we go. It's time for a super easy paint job, okay? We're gonna come in with our silver. Okay, we're gonna go from this line right here down. And now it doesn't matter if we go over the line because we're gonna be painting another color up here. All right. Now look at how it naturally leaves that darkness around everything. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this upside down right there so no silver's touching. We're going to put a little more silver down. And now we're going to come in with a brush, okay, because there's some areas that we couldn't get to right in these little grooves right here. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to get this fairly dry. All right, now when we wipe most of the paint off, what we're doing now is we're getting just a real dry brush silver on here. It's a light coat that's kind of broken up a little bit so that it's not totally covered, which is exactly how we want it, right? White on that side. All in here. It looks good. And that's it. See that? You need no artistic ability to do this. All right. All right, there we go. Perfect. All right, now we're coming back in with our black. And we're gonna paint the whole entire piece black over all of our plastid it black, right? We're just gonna follow right along our edge, just like that. All right, look at that. Look, that's some rich black right there. And 
that's it. Don't even need to really be careful. We're just going to come in and coat the whole thing black. Look at Beautiful. Wow. Look at that. That is looking good. That is rich black on there. And we've done everything but the handle because obviously we want something we can keep using while we're painting. So the handle's perfect. Just carefully cut around that little centerpiece just like that. All right. Now we're going to take our time and we're going to do this around all four pieces. All right, now down here, we're gonna follow our crease right across the bottom, just like that. That is really nice. <laughs> wow. All right, so we got this nice kind of like worn out look on the silver parts. Now we're going to let the black dry and then we're going to come in with one more tiny little detail. Nice. All right, now we're going to come in with our wrought iron. Okay, you've seen us use this before. It's a dark gray. It has some blue in it. Just All right, nice, look at that, just enough. See how we came in here with the gray in these spots and it just gives the metal, the black metal, a tone change so it looks a little bit oxidized. That's perfect. And right in here, all over the edges, that's perfect. All right, so we are in great shape with our oxidized look. Okay, now we're going to come in with our steel gray. We're going to get a little bit on our brush. Just hit the front edge just like that on each one of these. All right, there we go. We have some super subtle stuff going on in here. We just hit that really light gray on the front edges of, of a lot of our pieces. It's super, super subtle. You can't even see it unless you're really looking close. But when you get up close and you see the scratches on the front edges of those things, it looks pretty good. All right, look at that thing, man. We came in, we did our wrought iron on here to give it that little bit of an oxidized look. And then we came in with our, our uh, super light gray, our steel gray and a little brush. And we just clipped the fronts of everything. The front, the front of these little pieces, up here, all the fronts. The front of all these little teeth and then we've got some on these edges real subtle you can go as crazy as you want we just went super light on this one maybe too light but there you go looking pretty good man so with that last detail coming in with our steel gray and hitting some of the edges to look a little bit scratched that brings our PUBG vector build to a close That's right. Wow. Uh, like we said, tons of work, but all of this was so easy. Really, really easy. Um, so you saw it. You saw us finish off the whole build, put on all the little details everywhere, simple details. And then we came in for the really simple paint job. We sponged on the silver so it has that kind of like dirty crevice look and not totally filled in so it's look, the silver looks a little bit dappled. 
You can see some of the black through it. Helps with the aging look. And uh, we came in with brushed in all the black, which was totally easy. And uh, then we hit some of the random spots with our wrought iron, which is dark gray, to give it that kind of oxidized look. And uh, then we came in with a brush and silver, and we just hit on a lot of the edges on all the little pieces everywhere, just to give it that lightly kind of scratched off on the corners sort of feel. You can't see it from far away, but when you're holding it, you can see all the little silver scratches on the edges. It really has a nice little detail to it. So, uh, wow, this thing's jamming. And you saw us also get a little bit of uh, support in the handle too, just to help us out. Um, we didn't really have to, but it did help a little bit. So it's stiffer here now. But there you go. Uh, that concludes Making an EVA Foam Vector Part 2. Hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.